The Visual Textual Relationship in the Story of Ferdinand, an essay by Haj Ramix. The most successful collaborations occur when the illustrator truly understands the emotions and themes of the author's text. In such cases, the images become the cinematography and the words the screenplay, and the picture book itself becomes more like a short film. The book becomes an exercise in the interplay between words and images. This is certainly true in The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf with pictures by Robert Lawson, where a gentle bull refuses to fight and instead simply wants to sit and smell flowers. Lawson's ink drawings perfectly underscore the themes and intentions of Leaf's story. The ink lines are somber, yet sweet, and evoke a tender pathos in their sobriety. The clear, dark, and sweeping strokes evoke Charles Dana Gibson's art and the rounded grace of Rene Bull's drawings. The emotional undertone of the story is emphasized in these lines. One should follow the heart, and it's as clear as this crisp black and white images. Disney animated a short based on Leaf's book and it utilizes a completely different aesthetic. In Disney's cartoon, the animation focuses on the humor in Leaf's text while Lawson's illustrations focus primarily on the pathos. As a result, while the Disney story is funny and interesting, much of the pain, nuance, and noble heroism of the tale is lost. For example, Disney's animals are ungainly, with knobby knees and exaggerated expressions, while Lawson's cows and bulls are long-lashed and handsome. In a scene with Ferdinand's worried mother, Leaf writes, Because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. Disney banks on the humor in Leaf's description, resulting in a goggle-eyed, slapstick mother. Lawson, on the other hand, teases out the most tender parts of Leaf's words while also producing a splendid juxtaposition to the textual humor. Rather than becoming slapstick, the comedy is of the wittier tongue-in-cheek variety. Lawson's mother is empathetic and graceful, and yet she still wears an absurdly large bell that reads, Mother. Likewise, Ferdinand's cork tree actually has bottle corks hanging in bunches off of it, which almost go unnoticed in an otherwise idyllic scene. And the notches on a tree indicate Ferdinand's yearly growth in another unexpected humorous detail. So Leaf's text is simultaneously moving and funny, and fittingly, Lawson's illustrations are simultaneously graceful and funny. The illustration subject matter is as well suited to the text as their style. The book opens once upon a time in Spain, and the page displays a charming castle evoking romance, fantasy, and the pursuit of dreams. What a proper lead-in to a tale about resisting conformity and following one's dreams. A lovely panoramic view that sets the time and place, and because of the castle, also the mood. The reader sees a herd of cows, and on turning back to this page, can even spot a minuscule Ferdinand beneath his beloved cork tree. The text goes on to introduce a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. Lawson inks a doe-lashed, wobbly calf alone in a peaceful pasture, absorbed in admiring a butterfly. In choosing the specific action, Lawson makes the most of what the author's text later explains about Ferdinand's character. In contrast to this dreamy scene of solitude, the rest of the calves tumble through the following spread in an energetic Z-shaped drawing. Ferdinand's serenity and solitude couldn't have been better emphasized. After that, the reader sees a beautiful and recurring layout where two-thirds of the page is below the horizon line and mostly white Space. Above the horizon line and fit into just the top of the page is the pasture and often the cork tree. In this recurring visual, Ferdinand and the reader are given space to think, space to be peaceful, and space outside the confinement of conformity. And when the text describes Ferdinand as liking flowers, Lawson draws him immersed in a bouquet-shaped patch of them with the calf emerging from the top like the most fragrant blossom himself. Despite never appearing in the text, the castle reappears as a vista from Ferdinand's perch under his favorite tree. Interestingly, Ferdinand, the cork tree, the castle, and the clouds above the castle are all vertical in shape. This emphasizes that they are alike. Ferdinand, like the cloud-kissing turrets, aspires to great heights, and visually, the sky is the limit. This is in sharp contrast to the budding bulls in the midground who are clashing horizontal lines of discord in this vertical image of harmony. Returning to Ferdinand's interlude with his worried mother, he is drawn in distant silhouette 
when she first walks into the frame. This emphasizes the danger of emotional distance and miscommunication. When the dismayed Ferdinand is being carted off to Madrid, the layout is again in a Z shape, echoing the chaotic energy of the calves in the beginning. It is a visual reminder that Ferdinand has not escaped this chaos, and in fact, that he may drown in it. In the beginning, he was outside of this chaotic arrangement, and now he is most visibly within it. Later, Lawson keeps his step with Leif's verbal waltz, and Ferdinand's tiny name in text is reciprocated with a tiny Ferdinand peeking through the arena gates. Poetically, when Ferdinand sits down to just smell flowers even in the arena, like the gentle soul that he is, the crowd and all the scary noise recede. Our two-thirds of the page is freed up again for that fabulous, placid space to dream. Ferdinand, in both text and image, has found a way to bring his cork tree and pasture with him to this awful place. The ending finds Ferdinand back at home, and the last sentence states, he is very happy. He is drawn in silhouette under his cork tree, with the dominant white of the page, his flowers and his peaceful thoughts permanently return to him. This is not solitary confinement, but the fulfillment of personal desires. Ferdinand, like Virginia Woolf, needs and has attained a room of his own to think, dream, and be free. Leaf and Lawson are a picture book match made in heaven. Consciously or subconsciously, they complement each other perfectly in a visual text relationship where Leaf's plot and tone is matched in mood and content by Lawson's ink drawings. 